Hey, what's up to the point listeners? It's your boy, Cristiano, the host of To The Point Home Services podcast. I'm excited to have somebody actually in the new studio again today. It's always better when I get to look at somebody right in the face and have a conversation with you versus over the computer, especially this guy who we're meeting for the first time officially in person today. So David, nice to meet you. Um, before we go any further though, I just want to bring something up. So who I have in the, in the studio today is, is uh, somebody I've been having some communication with over the past few months. And, um, and his name is David Lord. And he is the uh, a general manager at Nexa Reception. We're, call, we're calling it Nexa. It's Nexa. Um, receptionist. It was Nexa Receptionist. It's Nexa today. But uh, I'll tell you why it's important. It's new Nexa. We'll talk about that in a minute. But his name is David Lord. And something interesting about that last name. There's something interesting about that last name. Did you know that we, we actually now have a connection? I did not know that. Because I, too, am now a Lord. You know what that movie is? No, tell Gl us. Glory. Glory. That was a movie with Denzel Washington. It was about the Civil War and the uh, the African-American army that got to go and leave. Great movie if you've yep. never seen Glory. Anyhow, so what do you mean? I, you know, I think you knew this already, but last week uh, I was in uh, Paris and then I went over to London for about, I was there for about 10 days in total. But one of my missions was, I started about three months ago, was researching how could I become a knight in the UK? Well, that proves to be a little bit more challenging to become a knight because there's a lot of stipulations around, a lot of red tape, and you actually got to do some good for the country, and I'm clearly not from the country. I tried to use the podcast because I think that's actually our fourth uh, highest downloads in, for our country is the UK. So I thought, hey, I've done some good things for the UK. But turns out that didn't work. So uh, couldn't be a sir, which is we become a knight, you become a sir. So I went for the next thing, and that was to become a lord. And to become a lord, if you think of uh, lord in the terms, or like in the way of a landlord, right? You've heard that term before, you got a landlord. So if you purchase a piece of land in this designated area in, in the UK, you can become a lord. So that's what I did. So I now <laughs> own land. Wow. I am now lord Christopher Yano of Hogan Manor in Cumbria, United Kingdom. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So if you could just address me as Lord from here on out, that'd be great. So Lord Christopher, I would add, <laughs> uh, my father's not listening, but he's an Englishman from Nottingham. So they, they owned property a long time ago. That's so. pretty bad. That's actually far more credible than mine too. And, <laughs> and I did it kind of as a, as, a, as a joke, you know, but I was like determined to leave the United Kingdom a Lord and I, and I did make it happen. So I'm waiting for all my proper credentials to come in, but uh, man, it feels good. So... Um, don't worry, everybody listening to you. Um, I'm not going to make you call me Lord. And you're thinking, I'm not going to call you Lord anyway, Chris. <laughs> so anyhow, hi, David. I'm glad to have you in here, man. We've had a lot of really, really great conversations over the past, even say six months or so. Um, and, and I've been incredibly excited to be a witness um, and a recipient to all the good that you're doing at Nexa. And so um, the reason I think this that this podcast needed to be done right now is because uh, for those listening, you've probably experienced it. The first half of this year was incredibly challenging, especially if you're in the HVAC industry. It's just, you know, a lot of a lot of the mixture of things happening. Demand is incredibly decreased. It's significantly decreased across the United States of America, the majority of the U.S. So, you uh, we came off a, a couple years that were massive for us. So. Um, but demand is down significantly. There's far more new equipment in homes than ever before. Um, you know, there's far more people throwing money at digital marketing campaigns than ever before and more of it at the same time. Mother Nature certainly wasn't helping us until now here in Phoenix, Arizona. We've had 110 plus degree days, I think almost every single day of, of the month, which has been an absolute blessing. But you got to start to tighten the ship internally because fall is on the way and you can't just be. Uh, in the moment, working on all the things that are happening now, the demand that's happening now, you should need to take advantage of it, absolutely. But you still have to be thinking ahead for fall because it is coming and it's either going to railroad you or going to get on board with it. So I say you got to look internally and tighten the ship. You got to get things buttoned up, the things that you can control. And one of those things being 
your answering service for after hours, even your CSR coaching and development, all those things that sometimes that we kind of try, get rid of it, try, get rid of it. Um, CSR coaching is something that some people will do. And then there's a lot of turnover in the position and they don't do it again. There's just a lot of little things that you can't control. Answering service as well. And you know this, I had this conversation with you when we first met and it was, Dude, I used Nexa. Like I, I, I brought Nexa in on a beta test in 19 and 20 um, and ran it for the better part of a year and a half. And I was displeased with it. I told you that right when we first met. I was yep. like this. I'm like, because really what, what a lot of the, the listeners, uh, our contractors that are listeners are, are looking for is the least suckiest answering service to go with just so they at least got like something that's good. Like that's, you've probably heard that before. I'm sure that's no, that I hear it all the time. And I, I I say this from main stage all the time because it's the truth for so long. They've the answering services for home for specifically for home services. I don't know about anything else because that's not my world has been pretty shitty and we just got to be okay with that. And I'm not okay with it. So whenever you and I started talking the first place, I was like, okay, David, like, what's different about Nexa. And then you shared with me a a few things about what made it different because let's face it, like we were trying to see, can we do something? Can we not do something together? Because I still want to solve that problem for our, for our contractors. It's just more important than ever right now in this moment. So I got to know, man, like share with the listeners, because if some of you listeners have used Nexa before and said the same thing, like, Hey, I used it and they sucked. I was with you. I was right there with you. I said the same thing. I shut it down, but I will say, over the course of this last, you know, uh, nearly a year, I've been incredibly pleased with what you guys have been doing for our contractors at Rhino. And you have some mutual customers that are friends of mine. Like you've gotten to, you got to do some work with Gettle and uh, like, and some other friends of mine, the penguin guys, like, you know, um, you're getting ready to work with AC by J here locally two good friends of mine, my buddy, uh, Aaron and Mike over at eco in Ohio, like, and they're saying great things about you. So I'm like, cool. Like all the things are finally starting to add up in this answering service world. You realize like whoever wins this answering service game hits the absolute jackpot, right? Absolutely. Like, so that's what I told you right in the beginning. I was like, dude, proof is in the pudding. So like, what did you do? You came in, you know, nearly uh, a year ago or so. I think it's something like that, around the, around a nine year months, ago, nine yeah, months, 10, 10 months. months. So what did you do and come in and change that like shifted the whole, like that whole business to be as successful as it's been? And first off, well done. Congratulations. But what did you do, man? Like, well, th- thanks, Chris. Yeah. We, 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 uh, we're not done. We still have work to do, but we're <laughs> a lot better than we were. Uh, I think one, as you said, the bar is low. I think I'm setting the bar high, right? I have high expectations. We are an extension of the contractor's business, right? And we need to treat every caller as if it's, you know, their business. So their business is our business. The change I think comes down to three things. I'll I'll peel these a little bit away, but it comes down to people. And I know that's cliche, but you've built a very successful business. You know, it's, it's the quality of the people you have, how you train them, right? It's the processes you put in place. When you bring great people in, they bring with them experience that adds processes that are in place. I'll talk a little bit about that. And then technology. We upgraded our technology stack about 18 months ago. It starts with the people, right? CTO down, COO, VPs of technology. I mean, for a people powered service, we're very technical and we have great technologists with great backgrounds. And so I think obviously strategically coming in as a new leader, I loved the, you know, tie to the small business owner, medium business owner. I thought that really resonated with me. I liked the team that we had. We had a solid team. We've added some really high caliber people across customer success, across operations, people that have done it before at large and small scale BPOs. Um, and I like to call us almost a boutique BPO, right? Because there's flexibility in what we do with our, with our partners. Some people you mentioned get right. We've done multiple things with them from inbound outbound. Um, and so we, we, have kind of become and embrace that flexibility, uh, which I think has meant a lot to our, our partners. That's a big deal. I mean, that flexibility is a big deal in, um, like we, as a digital marketing company have to do the same thing. Like we, sometimes we're changing monthly based on what the actual, what's actually happening with the the individual contractor. So that is important, but you got to have bodies to be able to do that and systems to be able to do that. Yeah, exactly. And I think it, it all starts in the beginning, right? I think it used to be, you know, like I can't talk to the people that were here before me, but from what I've I've seen when I got here, it was very much try to sell, you know, the contractor on using us and get it live tomorrow, like get it live tomorrow. And what happened there was we weren't measuring twice and cutting once we weren't even measuring. We were just throw it live. Right. And and in that traditional message taking world, um, maybe 40 years ago that worked, we've been around uh, a long time, but in what 
you know, contractors, their customers need today, it, it's more, right? They need scheduling. They need booking. They don't want to wake up to missed calls with a message. They want to w- w- uh, walk in the door with an appointment for that day, yep. right, or the next day. And yep. so how do we do that? It took, you know, new onboarding processes, new quality assurance processes, a closed loop on governance for feedback loops uh, and measurement. So we've really come a long way. And, and we have, you know, we still have a lot of work to do. We'll always be changing and uh, evolving. And um but I'm, I'm excited to see where we've come and uh, it's been good to, to see and hear from, you know, our partners on uh, the positive momentum. Yeah, man. And I mean, progress, not perfection. Like there's, there's still some kinks in the chain, mm. but if you compare it to the others, they're significantly less like, so, and you know, I, I told you, I wouldn't, I was not going to make a public announcement about this until I felt really, really good about, is this actually the real deal? Yeah. And so I wanted to make sure that I, I knew that ahead of time. And then once I learned that you were working with some of my friends, you know, with large companies and that you could, you know, and we're just working with smaller organizations or working with organizations of all sizes in the home services space. Um, I was like, okay, cool. Like this thing is starting to come together. And you know that at Rhino, we listen to every single phone call for our customers. So that means we hear the, you know, the, uh, the you know, the companies answering their own phones, but then we also hear the answering services answering their phones. Right. So then part of what we do is, Hey, let's pay attention to these answering services and find out who they are. Cause in a lot of ways we get to reach out to those answering services on behalf of the contractor to say, Hey, like these are some like four shitty calls that you missed after hours, which typically has a high close ratio. Like you're butchering these leads. You need to get it fixed, especially right now when you have to tighten the ship. Yeah. When demand's low, every call counts. It's always kind of before, but every call counts right now. Yeah. And I so, think, yeah. sorry to cut you off there, yep. but strategically, I think we had a bit of a duck and cover <clears throat> kind of strategy in the past, right? Set somebody up, get them live, and hopefully they forget about us, right? And that's that's not a winning formula, right? Um, and I think something that we've really leaned into is engaging with our partners, engaging with our clients, and even I know you guys have your uh, um, CSR training, and and we welcome that feedback on our agents, and we've, I know our, our QA right. teams have talked and said, hey, give us that training and that feedback. Where can we get better? We want to get better, and we're not, we're not hiding from and, and accepting where we are today. We yeah, want thanks to for being going. open to that type of relationship because I mean that we're all help, we're helping each other for the contractor. Absolutely. So and so you can even like even with this stuff you can like uh, I know you have some relationships with schedule or uh, with uh, service titan scheduling and things like that too where you can go ahead and do the automatic scheduling and things like that too. So so maybe paint the picture then for what you know um, for what all you are able to do for the contractor. Absolutely, that's a that's a great question and something we worked a lot on in the kind of late right when I got here through kind of Q1 this year, I was making a a better process for booking, uh, specifically in the schedule engines, workies, um, various others. But I think the idea there is that, you know, in the, in the, the past world, you would give logins to a logins to a a scheduling system to a hundred agents, right? Our model, what makes it really cost effective is you're getting a hundred plus receptionists standing by to take your calls at any time. That's what gives it the scale. That's what allows it to be economies of scale, cost reduction, but it also makes it complex if you don't simplify it, right? Yeah. Agents are taking a lot of calls. I'm going to cut you off for just a second. I know you and I had this conversation early in the beginning because I tried to figure this out early on at Rhino. Oh, right. I remember, I remember that. This. I remember that. So I said, I think it was like 2013 and 14 or 14 and 15 or something like that, um, that I thought enough, like I'm like, it was hard to get leads coming in and, and we would listen to the after hours leads say from five to 9 PM and those that are actually answering their phones, like not the answering service, but the actual companies themselves that had somebody on call answering those phones were closing at a high rate. And I was taking that and tracking those closing ratio or the booking ratios and then attaching the, uh, if they sold it, what was a revenue attached to the after hours leads. And the number was always massive. Yeah. Like the revenue is big. The after hours numbers were big. The closing ratios were higher when the actual company answered their phone versus an answering service. So, so w- one more thing with that is I thought I'm sick of it. I could answer the damn phone and figure this out. I'm going to try and figure it out. So we committed to like a little over two years to creating an answering and after hours answering service. And what I learned quickly is I don't know how to, to scale one of those because I lost a shitload of money trying <laughs> to figure it out. But I will say the service was exceptional and we knew how to, to book the call. And we even had them pitching maintenance agreements with different bonus structures and things like that on behalf of the contractors. So then I was a win-win for me because now I offer an additional service that made me a better partner. And that was finding a really solid answering service. And I also was 
booking maintenance agreements for them and they were closing more you know, sales yeah. because of it. So it was a win-win, but I, I was bleeding money and it was pulling away from our core competency of digital marketing. And so something had to give. Yeah. And so I didn't, I didn't do it, but I learned it's certainly a volume game, but you got to have such great systems and processes and QA in place to actually scale that thing, to get it to even be a profitable business. And, and you guys are doing a good job of, so kudos for getting it uh, as figured out as you have so far. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. I mean, I, it comes back to that process, right? If you have, if you allow too much, too much flexibility, right. In the, in the way you set up the, call it the, the CRM that the agents are using, then it creates, it creates uh, confusion. And that's where you get to the bad, you know, we got to hire people that have, you know, conversational intelligence. They have the ability to multitask. We train them on the system, the industry, the process, but we have to put a system in place, a technology that makes it simple for them, you know? And then to your point, 40 on the data, you know, the data, but the data I've seen is 40% of calls after hours are bookable appointments. That's when people want to book. Uh, and 50% of those calls, you know, should be booked at, at a minimum rate, right? We look at all call and then we look at qualified calls and and that's kind of, you know, what we're targeting all the time is, you know, depending on different partners of ours, we'll, we'll weed out different leads as unqualified. Sure. Um, but, you know, I look at the total. How many calls do we take? How many got booked? Regardless, I think that's the starting point. And, um, and it's easier to manage to. What, what is the size of Nexo? Like, what, how many employees do you guys have? Hundreds of employees. Yeah. Uh, we have 1,500 home service clients yeah. Damn. in the portfolio. Okay. And, um, you know, as you'd expect, you know, HVAC's big, then yeah. plumbing, then electrical, but roofing's coming on. Garage. You know, garage is yeah. coming on. Solar's kind of coming on. Um, so it's uh, it's pretty, it's it's a pretty large business, yeah. large it's, organization. Yeah, I mean, um, that's great. I mean, because that gives you uh, constant practice working that, you know, those large verticals like that, where there's high volume in it too. So there's a lot to learn internally yep. know, from that. Um, this was also one of the questions that I asked you right up front because it, it matters, you know, it matters. So when, when you have an, uh, an answering service and the person on the other end of the line doesn't speak good, clear English and it's obvious that they're not in the United States of America, that becomes a problem for some, not all, for some. Yep. Because you can see a drop off, like from what we were keeping track of when we were doing it. Now keep in mind, this has been, been a minute, but mm -hmm. there was a drop off based on how thick the accent was and even location. Like let's say you're answering phones in Alabama and your calls being answered overseas. It was even a bigger decrease. Yep. I use that as an example for the South. You know what I mean? Yep. I it's you. different, mm -hmm. you know, uh, <laughs> it's different a little bit. Um, but one of the questions I asked you was like, it's hard to staff us based and actually make, make be a for profit and being a for profit business and make money. There's gotta be other solutions other than just going over see. So one of the questions I asked you was, you know, are these Asians, you know, are these uh, agents, overseas are they uh now near shore and or are they in the u.s is there a mixture so so maybe share with the listeners kind of what the range is that you guys uh, that you guys use yeah abs absolutely that's a great question and uh i'll touch on it in a couple ways but yeah we don't do anything offshore so nothing across the atlantic um, we do leverage near shore in Mexico for bilingual. Uh, and then we have an English first location in Belize. In Belize. Uh, and I've told you this because right. everybody goes Belize. Oh, they're Spanish there too. They're not. Actually. They're not. Yeah. So I, I <laughs> said the same shit. And that's why I was like, okay, cool. Like, but, and I was like really blown away, but I was like, okay, cool. Way to find like a little loophole there. Well, and they're, and they're, they're great people. And they, uh, they're, I think to, to, peel the onion on that question though a little bit more, something that really helped us. And this wasn't, this happened before I got there. Right. So I'm a beneficiary of this one, but we went hundred percent remote. As you know, we were, yeah. we were headquartered here in Phoenix. We had a big operation in Richmond and California. And when, uh, COVID hit, we'd already started with some more remote agents, but we really embraced it. Right. So we are in 26 States in the U S and something right when I got here, a decision I made was let's pay a little bit of a better wage in to your point, rural Alabama yep. versus trying to pay a probably not great wage here in Phoenix. And that pays dividends because you get people that are actually a little higher caliber um, in those areas. And, and it's really paid off. We've had better, I mean, 
our absenteeism, if, if you ran call centers, you know, call, call centers run in the 10 to 15%. That's kind of, you know, I standard. Didn't, I didn't get that far, man. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, we, we, we run three to five. Like we have people show up to work that's uh, great. a lot and our turnover is really low. So, and I think that's a part of that is the, you know, it's the culture, it's the people, you know, I think that remote embracing remote, which is a technical, you know, you got, you got to invest in technology to allow that to be a scalable solution when people aren't sitting in an office all day. And, and that's helped us a lot from a, a where people are based. And then obviously we're, we're always hiring for, you know, English skills, uh, you know, conversational intelligence, as I said, is a big one for me. So question for you. Um, one, the fact that you have very minimal turnover with that's great. It says a lot about the actual culture of the business, probably a lot. Well, I'm assuming is when you, because you're able to pay them a little bit more, they feel a little bit more valued, you know, financially as well. So a little harder to walk away from, from that in a call center position. Yeah. And no, I think no disrespect. I'm just saying like, yeah, yeah. you're paying a little bit more. And so financially it's easier to, you, know, you, you want to stay. If so, if you feel, if you feel in the love, so to speak, and you're getting paid uh, fairly, you know, then turnover's low. Yeah. My, my saying is people don't want to be messed with their pay. <laughs> their dreams and their goals. Right. And if you kind of align in there, you're in, you're in the sweet spot. But I think the other thing with really moving from a, what would call it a traditional answering service to a, let's call it a booking service is, is what we like to say. Uh, that allows obviously opportunity for people to make more money too. Right. Cause you can incentivize the right, you know, outcomes for, for clients. So that gives them the ability to make a little more money. So that's always a good one. Booking too. service. I see what you did there. Okay. Cause that is the end result of the service booking that's, service. Gosh. Okay. So that seems so silly. <laughs> Have you told me that before? Because if you do, I don't remember. Like that one's going to stick for me. You're a booking service. Um, and just so you know, guys uh, and gals, everybody listening, um, David did not pay to be here. <laughs> I invited him to be here. Now, he was coming in to, uh, to meet with one of our um, now mutual customers too. And I thought, you should come in and shoot a podcast with me because this is really important for them to hear to have this particular option and so um, I'm sure that some of them are thinking like, well, if you're paying more, does that mean like the expense, you know, or the cost to use Nexa is greater than others? Um, I mean, how, how is your cost comparable to some of these other competitors? And then, and then I'm, I'm going to add a second after you answer that question. Okay. Let, let me back up on that on one. I didn't get to say this, but thank you for having me. And the place <laughs> looks beautiful. If I'm the <laughs> first you, one in here, this place is amazing. So we jumped right in today. So thank you for that. So You're price welcome. wise, um, that's a great question. Look, we're not, we're not the Mercedes. We're by far not the most expensive, but we're also not the cheapest, right? To your point, you want, you want to pay rock bottom dollar. You can go overseas and probably hire a company in the Philippines and pay less and, you know, get what you pay for, right. for a, for a bit. Um, I think our, pr our pricing is fair and it's very transparent. Like, if we do work for you, we bill you. <laughs> if we don't work for you, we don't. Uh, we don't have like additional fees for, you know, working holidays or nights or weekends. And so I would say it's, if you're evaluating answering services, cause we're not for everybody. And, and, uh, I, I hope we get a shot with everybody, a second chance for those that we, we didn't deliver for in the past. But yeah. I think if you're going to evaluate, you know, transparency and pricing is an important one, right? And it's a balance. We bill per minute, others bill per call. Um, you know, you can go either way, right? You don't want us rushing off a call quickly so that we make more money because we're billing you six bucks a call and I only want to be on there for a minute. So my cost is, a, you know, whatever dollar. Yeah. Um, but the flip side, you don't want us talking all day and billing up minutes, right? That's the balance you have to have in your, in your, uh, in your business. But I mean, a booking call, you can look at your internal data as a, a a contractor, if you measure that, hopefully they're all measuring calls. I know you guys help with that. So hopefully everybody's looking at their, <laughs> their SLAs and their, their KPIs. We could talk a little bit about that, but I think the key one is it's, it's always going to be a basic message is three and a half, four minutes and a, a booked call is going to be five and a half to six minutes. Right. And so. Yep. Uh, so, so question then around those metrics, yeah. cause you just brought it up. I'm not going to go deep. I just want to get some ideas. Mm -hmm. So, um, because I know that um, you're working with my buddies over at Eco and like uh, the Penguin guys, you know, here in Phoenix. Some of those guys. What are some like good averages on just performance that that, that can you share that? Yeah, or do you have something that you can share that's at least like general ballpark of what those are? I get this yeah, thing yeah. can can vary um, for different reasons, but like, do you have a ballpark on what that is? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So we we peg um, a 10% abandon rate. We want to be below that, right? So if after hours, you're getting 10 calls and you're abandoning 10, you know, 
you're getting a hundred calls in a month and you're abandoning 10%, you're missing 10 calls. If you send those to us, we're going to miss one. Now you netted nine new calls of which we should book five of those, which, you know, they're $75,000 HVAC deals. You're making a great ROI for a few hundred bucks a month. Right. Sure. Um, but, uh, I think the big one, obviously that people want to see is what's the an- average wait time. People don't want to wait on the phones. Right. right. So what's the speed to lead? So if we have a lead come in, how quick do we call it back? Cause yeah. we didn't talk about outbound yet is a big one. Um, you know, do we call it back within seconds or a minute? They, they get really stale after two to five minutes. So there's a big curve there on the inbound side. We, we target an SLA of 88%. So we want to answer 88% of our calls in under three rings and we want to abandon less than 10%. And yeah. I looked at the data right before, cause I knew you were going to ask me <laughs> yesterday was 91% SLA and a 7% <clears throat> abandon. So it was a good day. Well, because that's the number that matters most to me and to the contractor is like, okay, great. They do a good job answering the phone when they answer the phone. But also what are, what is the abandonment rate? That's a big deal. Um, that's the number we're trying to avoid it increasing. I mean, really at the end of the day, we're trying to book calls and book legit good calls. Cause the last thing we want to do is also send somebody out to a shitty call and they waste time, money, fuel, all the things going to something that's never going to close or sell. You can't, you can't control that, but certainly you can qualify it. Yep. You know, qualify with, with your, with your different you know, trainings and processes and things that you guys have in place. So, um, these are all the things listeners just, so you know, that I hammered this guy with in the beginning. I'm like, because I've heard it. I mean, you can imagine I've heard it all. And I have so many that reach out to me who want to basically jump on the rhino coattails because we have a lot of contractors and we have influence and things of that nature. So I'm always super hesitant, but to me, it always comes down to just like at rhino, the facts. I want to know the facts. How many leads did I bring in that were legit brand net new leads and at what cost for the contractor? And then ultimately, what did they do with it? Did they close it? Did they not close it? What was the revenue? That's how you've, we've maintained a reputation for so long. A good reputation is by doing the right thing. We've not nailed it always either, as even as good as we are. And we certainly don't hide it. But we try to do what's best based on all this data that's like factual data, yeah. like tangible, real stuff, not like feelings and shit like that. So I respect that about you, that you pay attention close to those numbers too, because those numbers allow you to make internal changes and shifts based on performance. Absolutely. And, and help you become a better booking service. Booking service. So, Get so jobs I want, booked. I want to throw something out. You kind of impromptu and, and uh, Ryan, I don't know how we're going to pull this off, but what do you think about, what do you think about me calling one of your, uh, calling a customer? If you, if you know one like that, or you could think of one or do you have, maybe I'll give you a second to think through, but can we call it? Can I just use my cell phone and maybe do like a speaker phone call? Would you be okay if I did that? We called somebody on the air. I know I'm putting you on the spot, dude, but yeah, like, I want to make sure cool it's someone that we're going to answer. Or it's going to suck. <laughs> it's either going to be really good or it's going to be shitty. No, we, let's not have an epic fail here. Um, okay. Uh, do you have somebody like that, that you could, that you could think of that we could maybe, maybe call, even if you have to pull it up on your phone or something like that, or somebody that we can call, but I think it'd be neat to do an on air. We've never done this before. The closest thing we had was when we did that interview with, um, Jim. Oh, when was it? Anyway, we did, we think we did a mock call on the air and then we did one. Anyway, we've, we've kind of done, I've never called somebody live before. So this will be a first. Hopefully I've given you, I've spitballed enough to give you enough time to think of who I can, I can call. It's not the first. We did one at a board meeting. That was fun. Oh, you did? Uh, Yeah. Yeah. That was really fun. Um, so we'll use the same one. It went great. It went great. Oh shit. I was, I was, I was, I was, you know, nervous, but I was confident. Okay, so so then who is it? Call uh, Ben's at 276-533-1970. Uh, they're in Virginia, so you're going to have to act like you're from Virginia. So I talk with an Ga- accent. You're from Gaithersburg, Gaithersburg, Maryland. actually, you know, a few people in Gaithersburg. So, um, so good question. I'm going to need to have an address. So what's the zip code there? Uh, 20877. All right, I'm going to pull up. All right, will you, what's... You want to use a whole address here? Yeah, yeah, give I me think I, we used last time 540 Carousel Court. Carousel Court. And I'm in Gaithersburg? Gaithersburg, Maryland. I don't know if you want Shout to. to I don't know if you want to go that far because that'll be a five and a half minute call. I don't know how much time we're running <laughs> up on it, but yeah. <laughs> uh, shout out to my man, Rich Piava, uh, GAC Services over in Gaithersburg. Um, two zero eight seven seven. You said, "Yep." Was the okay five forty carousel court? God, my handwriting sucks. Bins. All right. So, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Let's see. Okay, this ought to be interesting. Um, Ryan, let me know if the volume is loud enough. Okay, seven six five three three one nine three 
Can you hear that okay? Thank you for calling Ben Phone Services. This is Melody. How can I help you? Did you say Melody? Yes, sir. Everybody loves a good Melody. <laughs> <laughs> You, 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 thank you for the courtesy laugh. I appreciate you, Melody. I'm sorry. Hey, hey, I just wanted to give you a quick call. I have a, uh, I got home and the air conditioning in my living room was blowing um, hot air. But when I go into the bedroom, um, the air is still cold. So uh, it's warm enough out that I want to make sure I can get that thing fixed. Um, do you guys service the Gaithersburg area? Um, you know, uh, bear with me one second here. And let's trying to get my air service areas to pop up and of course it's not popping up but if I could get some information um it will uh direct us and let us know would sure. that be okay absolutely all right thank you all right well let me take down some information and see if I can get you on the schedule and who do I have the pleasure of speaking with please my name is Chris D-H-R-I-S. thank you Chris the last name is T O F F E R, Topher. T as in Tom. Yep. O F F as in Frank. E R. Yep, Chris. Topher. All righty. And what is the best callback number for you, please? Uh, two seven six. Two five one. Two seven three eight. Two seven six two five one two seven three eight. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and your AC is blowing warm air, hot air in your living room, but in the other parts of the house, it's blowing cold air. Correct. It looks like it's okay everywhere except for the living room. So I have a, a zone system. I think it's called where I have got thermostats in the bedrooms and in the living room separate. document the issue. Thank you. All right. One moment while I pull up the schedule. And have you used our services before? I have not. All right. Thank you for choosing us today. I'm just waiting for the schedule to load here. Thank you for your patience. Lagging just a little bit. I'm so sorry. That's okay. It happens to me too all the time. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. So we Yeah, my hope is I can get somebody out sooner than later since it's pretty warm out and the um, living room is pretty hot. Absolutely. All right, let's see how quick we can get you in an appointment. Um, 276 Okay, I'm just going to take a moment. I'm just going to have to, because it's your first time, um, into your information, into our system. T-O-S-S-E-R. Okay, so do you have a mobile phone? I do. Um, would it be okay if we use that number? Sure. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, it's a uh, out-of-state area or a phone so not a big deal but it's okay that's gonna be is that correct yes ma'am And your zip code, please? 
20877. 20877. All right, perfect. Looks like you are in our area. And your uh, street address, please. 540 Carousel Court. C-A-R-R. I'm sorry? C-A-R-R. Could you spell the street for me, please? Oh, Carousel. Oh, boy. I'm going to do my best. C A R. O U S E L. I did not do well in spelling bees in school, Melody. Me either. <laughs> Me either. Okay. That's uh, 540 Carousel Street, Carousel Court. Court. Okay. Sorry. In Gaithersburg. Yes, ma'am. Okay, it looks like we can get somebody out there um, tomorrow, the 27th, between 8 a.m. and 12 p.m. or 12 p.m. and 4 p.m. You know, I'm an early riser, so 8 a.m. would be better for me because it's already warm enough in this house and I'd like to get somebody over as soon as I can. So um, nothing um, nothing you can do to get somebody over, over there today? Um, I... That's the only thing on my schedule. If you want me to send this over to the scheduling department saying that I wasn't able to schedule you because you wanted a sooner appointment, I can do that. Yeah. Or you can go ahead. If you want to do that instead of grabbing this appointment. Um, I'd like to maybe get go ahead and schedule this one, but then maybe if you could just see if, I, if there's an opportunity, if something cancels or whatever, to get somebody over sooner, I would appreciate that. Okay. Um, I appreciate you looking. I'm guessing with all that heat, it's busy. Yes. Okay. I added that note in there that if anybody cancels, you would like someone to come sooner. But we're going to go ahead and grab this appointment for you tomorrow, 8 to 12. That way you know for sure you got some relief coming. Thank you. Absolutely. And could I get an email, please, so I can send you a confirmation of your appointment? Sure. It's C-Y-L-O-P-E-2-7 at gmail.com. Thank you. I have elope, e, well, it kind of looks like it, E-Y-L-O-P is in Paul, E, the numbers two, seven, at gmail.com. Perfect. All right. All right. Well, thank you, um, Chris, for your patience. I have you all set for tomorrow between 8 and 12. You should be receiving a te text confirmation soon and an email. Thank you for choosing Ben's Home Services, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Melody. Take care. Thank you, Chris. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I almost messed that one up. <laughs> By the way, Ryan, you better bleep out my cell phone number on that because I gave you the real one. <clears throat> All right. So if you were to give that call a 1 out of 10, how would you how would you score that? Uh, I'd, I'd give it a... Maybe a 6.5. Yeah. I have a high, high, uh, you know, there wasn't too much dead time. There was empathy. Um, I think something we're working on, something you notice, right? The difference between your receptionist in your office versus Melody is Gaithersburg, right? Like she's not in Gaithersburg. She could be in Belize. She could be in, you know, Alabama. Sure. She doesn't know, right? So she's relying on the system and we're putting something in place uh, as we speak actually over the coming weeks that that's going to help the, the specialist know the location um, and you know, obviously also if it's a, an existing customer, that's a big one. <laughs> that's a very hard to do. So thanks for letting me do that. <laughs> yeah, no, I was, uh, I was waiting for the phone number to kick out as an in inaccurate phone number and how she was going to handle that one. <laughs> <Just> made, <laughs> some of these things I didn't think about, you know, because 
But uh, I don't even know if that's a real phone number. She, I think. She, I don't think it is. That's okay. why I think she said, "Hey, do you have a mobile number? Because this is not working." <laughs> I should have just done that from the beginning. Like, who has a freaking home phone number any, yeah. anymore? Anyway. Yeah. I mean, I live in Arizona and I have an Indiana cell phone number, so it's no different. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Well, I appreciate you. You let me do that. I mean, that's, that's like as tough as it gets. That's almost like doing live role playing, you know, when you're, you know, trying. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And it, I, I thought you did a fantastic job. And I think, you know, the end of the goal was to get it booked. We got it booked. Um, you know, I think, uh, like I said, I, I think there's, there's opportunity always for improvement. So I'm, you know, you're going to ha- have a hard time finding me saying, yeah, that was a 10. Yeah, no, I understand. <laughs> I understand, you know, um, you know, so, and I tried to just challenge her a little bit at the end by saying, uh, yeah, that's great, but I'd really like to get somebody here now, you know, so she at least played into it and put it into her, whether it was real or not, you know, like a little she, bit, yeah. she handled it a little they're bit. They're typing so. away. It's hard, man. It's hard. You talk she on the phone used- and type your, and typing and, and, you know, these, they're using a dual screen with, you know, there's no paper and pens. We're not allowed to use paper and pens. No one's writing stuff down on a notepad. It's on a digital, it's a full digital experience, what they're working on. And so, and you don't know, we, uh, this is a busy time of year. You mentioned it. Oh, yeah. Volumes up 30%. Um, everybody's thankful for that. We, we've obviously hired a to scale up for that. So I also don't know that that agent could be, you know, we had a big class release two weeks ago. I could have been a, no. a newer agent too. Right. Well, so if she's newer, she's still fine. I mean, the call yeah. was probably longer than you had liked. There's probably more dead space than you had liked, but it's also, uh, I mean, she was fine. Pleasant. Yeah. You know, you weren't, I wasn't sitting on hold. Yep. You know, you, didn't, like, you so. didn't notice an accent. I don't not not a no nope. thick Southern accent, not a Jamaican accent, not a, you know, Mexican accent or Spanish Correct. accent. So I thought it was, you know, solid. Okay, good. All right. Well, that was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Are you sweating fun. a little bit? That was fun. I was <laughs> sweating a little bit. I was trying not to, not to giggle or say anything and <laughs> give so it away. Was I. <laughs> I was trying not to look at Ryan in the face so he didn't make me laugh. Okay. Moving on. Sorry. Cause I know we're about probably like 40, 40 quarter, 45 minutes into this thing already too. I don't want to keep, you know, drag it out any longer. This is a great topic to talk about. I thought that was actually something that was worth doing. And I, re- and I was, uh, I, I wanted to do that just to kind of do something on the fly, just to have the actual experience heard live. And for me to, to feel it live too. I mean, um, could have, it, that could have went either, either way. Yeah. So I'm glad it went exactly as I've uh, experienced it over the past, you know, you know, say half of a, a year and what you say it is. So yeah. it was, um, a, it, that was a great, I would say also, that was a good example of an overflow call, right? Like it, it was, it's during the day, so it's not nice weekends, but you didn't, I don't, we didn't measure it, but I mean, that was like one ring pickup. So, one, you know, your two. average wait time was probably two seconds, you know, three seconds, one ring, four right. seconds. So, yeah, I guess this was late afternoon there as well. So, um, it's, it could have been, I guess, quarter after, it's an after two, like an after two, it's, it's so, after two there. Um, okay. So moving on. <laughs> so I want to, I do want just from your experience in studying some of these things, and I'm going to talk more specifically to home services and that would include, um, you know, all HVAC pl- uh, plumbing, electrical, throw garage doors into it, you know, um, but what are you seeing, um, what are you seeing some of these home service companies doing now um, that are like, that they're not paying attention to it that, or that they're um, maybe from what you're hearing on when they're trying to do, uh, they've been using a, a, a an answering service or, and, or they've been, they've been using an overflow service. Um, maybe we'll start internally, like internal calls that are coming in. What are you hearing from them now? That's like the biggest pain points that you've been able to solve. I mean, um, I'm sure there's a variety of things and this to me seems like a pretty easy one to answer, but I don't want to assume cause you know what happens when you assume make yeah. an ass out of you and me, mostly me, but like, what is the normal things that you're hearing? Like the pain points that, that these contractors are, are uh, sharing with you or your team? Yeah. I mean, the big one is obviously hiring, right? You, you talked about it earlier for us, right? It's challenging when you have hundreds of people, you know, how do you, how do you hire the right people? How do you retain them? Right. So a lot of, you know, a lot of our clients use us in, in overflow and after hours because it's hard to hire, right? Yeah. It's expensive, right? We, you, you, we talked about our pricing. Our pricing is all in, like that includes training. That includes all the equipment, the licenses, everything that we're, we're doing, right? You hire an internal employee, you know, you need to, all the overhead costs, all the training costs, the ongoing, and and to do it overnight is is expensive because one person can't work twenty four seven three. We never take a minute off, right? And so trying to do it all in house um, always results in clients either leaving us to take it in house and then coming back and going, yeah, that costs a lot more than just you know having you guys do it. Yeah. Um, 
I think that's a, that's a big one in terms of challenges. Obviously they come to us because they're abandoning calls, right? Their SLA is, uh, is, is tanking, um, again, because either volumes up or, um, you know, mixed with employee turnover. That's the biggest one. Well, I mean, one thing that we didn't really talk about too much, I just want to put it out there for all the listeners too. And when when I was asking you about pricing, it's because that always comes up, right? Like what's this thing going to cost me? Here's what you got to be aware of. Think about what you're paying for an answering service now or what you've paid. Would you pay more if they actually booked it? What'd you say? 80, whatever, whatever percent. And we're trying was. to get to 85% <clears throat> of uh, qualified leads. Yep. Yeah. I mean, because you're looking at it from an, an expense, like I'm saying you, the, the, the listener, because it is an expense. It's a, it's an OPEX. Um, the, it is more important to think about what are you getting from that service and what's the revenue being sold from the better service versus what you're actually in paying for, you know, the, 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 the answering service or the booking service. So the reality is, is that who cares? Whenever I was running my answering service in the beginning, I started with like 350 bucks a month and there was like minutes overage and it was a pain in the ass. And I was like, well, this isn't making me any money. I'm losing a shitload. Someone raised it to 500 to 700 to a thousand to 1500. I was sitting at like 1500 bucks a month for like a small contractor, which was, I could, I could have kept going, but the service was booking so good. And I was attaching the rev, the actual sold revenue to the calls that were booked after hours that it was easy to make sense and, and, uh, you know, validate the expense because of what we were, what they were actually selling from the better service. So hell yeah, was paying, they were paying more because the service was phenomenal. So that's the way I view this thing is we need more, we need to get in the house as frequently as possible. If it costs me a thousand, I was throwing out a random number, a thousand dollars a month more, $2,000 a month more, whatever it is to get into more homes and more opportunities, bring it, especially right now, because every opportunity counts. So another thing that I want to, I want to shift gears to, unless you had any comment you wanted to make I, on that. I'd make a couple, a, a quick comment on that. Okay. I think you're right on, right? I mean, there's two things, right? You look at the value, the average lifetime value of a client, right? And the average client, uh, you know, the average person, 85% of people aren't going to call a second time. So you're going to lose that lifetime revenue. You, you know, you have the booking to acquire, which we've been talking about, which is, Hey, get them booked. I get a new customer, HVAC customers set 50, $75,000 of lifetime value. I've also got to keep that client. So if, if I get a call from a member and I don't answer the phone, 85% aren't going to call back and you just lost that life, that lifetime value came down. Right. So it's a, it's an acquisition and a retention play. And to your point for the cost of a client, um, you know, a year you're paying, you know, you know, it's, it's the, the, the return on investment, the improvement in ROAS or return on ad spend. It's, it's an, it's really is a no brainer, but we have to do our job. Right. And, and that's what we're focused on. So. Yeah. And I think I, one thing that I love the most too, is just, again, kind of coming back to this quality assurance deal is just the, the volume of attention that you put on QA um, and constantly trying to be better and chipping away at a percent on those things makes a big difference. Um, we, but, we look at that. And I think you and I've talked about this. I mean, we literally, every Tuesday we go through quality numbers. We have a Friday sync on all the agents. What are the issues, right? We have zero tolerance, um, you know, disqualifiers for, for, uh, specialists. And, and I think we've been so transparent with that and invested so much in training that those very rarely come up, right? Like, like a bad call is like, there was some dead airtime, you know, there was maybe not as much interaction as we'd like, but it's not like negative experiences, losing a client, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's not, that's not happening. I get a lot of calls from, from our clients saying, Hey, I'm really, I apologize for my customer and the way they treated your agent. Kudos to your agent for doing such a great job just <laughs> with the empathy there. Cause <laughs> I would have lost it. Right. And so that's nice to hear. Yeah. That's good. to hear. And I think two years ago, if I look back at old QA, you were talking about years ago, if I look at the old data, we got a lot of like, I couldn't understand the the person on the phone. Yeah. Right. I, and that was the biggest complaint and reason people weren't wanting to deal with us. Right. They were not no empathy. I couldn't understand them. And, and we don't, we don't hardly, I, I haven't seen that in a long time. So that's, that's, that's great news. That's well, step one. Yeah. So, so, um, one other quick thing I was just thinking of when you were talking about this, um, you know, I know that you're, you have, uh, you guys are able to work within service Titan, you know, there's other CRMs that are like, you know, there's house call pro there's success where there's whatever there's other, these other CRMs. Um, in some of these instances, like with Melody, is she maybe booking that? And then maybe because of the CRM that we don't have access to, you know, to, or they, you know, or they don't have, maybe they don't have one. Maybe they're just, I got out, I have, um, Calidly uh, or something. I mean, whatever. We use Calidly. <laughs> um, 
that they have to, they're planning to book the appointment, even though the contractor might have to, the dispatcher might have to call back and, and rebook. Does that happen at all for you guys? We will do that. We actually, um, in some cases, um, will actually dispatch to ourselves and handle that for the contractor. Uh, in that case, they're not. I think they're using, they're either using schedule engine or service fusion. Um, Workies, schedule engine, service fusion, we're booking it right in there in real time uh, on a dual screen. So it's booked, booked. And uh, I think the escalation of, hey, can you get me sooner? That'll obviously go to a dispatcher to, to right. kind of try to figure out. But for the most part, um, we're in there. Um, we also have like a big remodel client uh, nationwide, and we actually use our phone system. Uh, but we actually interact in their CRM, their Salesforce instance the entire time. So everything we do is as if we're them in their That's actual cool. system. That's great. Um, again, back to that flexibility and, you know, scale and that's yeah. actually taking leads and outbound calling them and then booking appointments for them. Yeah, so that's our outbound now capability. Now you're an extension of the, can of, of the business. So yeah. that's where I was, that's, you mentioned outbound. That's where actually I was, I was headed next because it's another one of those tools that can be used right now. And this will probably be the last topic I hit on just for the sake of the length of this, of this podcast, but, um, is the outbounding effort that you should be doing right now, but it also can come down to bandwidth and, and then listen, there's a skill to outbounding, you know, to be able to have successful outbounding because most people don't want to be outbounded too. Um, you know, but the, it's something that you've had a lot of success with as well. But, and again, it's just another tool when we're trying to scratch and claw away to find anything that, anything that we can, which absolutely is going to happen as we go into fall, um, an outbounding effort, a good outbounding effort should be a critical tool that you are using to keep the business going, especially if you had to add any bodies in summer and you need to carry them, you know, into fall. Um, you need things for them to do and to run besides just running the maintenance agreements, you know, and milking the maintenance agreements. That is a part of it. But if you can also run a, a solid outbounding campaign, but you should be doing this. If I asked Ken Goodrich, he's like, you should be doing all these things all year long, all the time. Um, and that's partially you know, part of their success, right? Is they're not afraid to keep, keep their foot to the floor and keep growing. Yep. So you have this outbounding piece to it. Um, what, like, what are you doing with the outbounding stuff like that? And, um, and like, maybe, maybe Cliff notes it for like the person who's saying like, well, how does that work? Like I say, Hey David, I'd love to bring on Nexa for outbounding. What is, what's the like spiel on that? And like, yeah. what do you guys do for them? Yeah. Uh, obviously client specific. Um, as you said, certain clients are doing it all year round and they're just moving between different trades, different locations. So it's used as, Hey, we're really slow in Albuquerque right now. Can you dial all our members in Albuquerque and, you know, fill our books up big in the spring and the, and the fall right. and the, uh, the shoulder seasons, but it's also pretty big even year round if they're overstaffed, right. To keep staffs busy. Um, we do mostly, you know, lead lists that are provided by partners, whether they come through a, a marketing partner or a membership list. We also now have the ability to go and find lists of homeowners for them that are, that are compliant. TCPA is a big one. So outbound outbound has a lot of legal twists and turns. You got to be uh, prepared for. Um, there's also, you know, the metrics we always look at, right. Is like, what's our contact rate, right? If we're calling on behalf of the client, can we brand and mask the number? That's a, a big deal. And we've gotten that figured out, which has helped a lot. That's the 20% lift in your, in your contact rate, which is huge. Yeah. Um, so for those that aren't familiar, if you're calling and the number says spam, it's a lot less likely you're going to get picked up. If you call and the number says this is rebath and they're expecting a call from rebath, they're going to answer the phone. It makes perfect sense. Right. I see spam, so, I'm not answering my phone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Me neither. Um, so I think that's, that's been a big one for us, right? It's really, a, it's a numbers game and dialing, right? Got it. But it's a, it's a, something you can do year round and not just we do it. We offer a lot of different packages, I would call them, and programs. So it's it's hard to peel here, right? Yeah, we can sure. put fixed headcount deals together for you. We can do per minute, right? We're, we have some flexible uh, models based on what, on what you need, right? Um, are you solar and you're just trying to book appointments? Um, roofing, similar. Has there been a, an event in a certain market and you're trying to really power dial that market to get get roofers on site after a hurricane or after a hailstorm? So. so you're doing lead, so you're doing like lead like lead capture like that where you're, you're doing booking the appointment and then kicking it off to why aren't we doing that together? I don't know. We should, we should Holy totally be doing shit. that. Yeah. I don't know why I haven't asked that question. I, I we might, I, did we not? I don't think so. Okay. Cause I don't even remember that we did that, but that's something that I, okay. So now there gives us another topic to talk through on, see how I can do appointment, like some appointment or lead setting for some of our, okay. Yep. We're going to talk about that. 
Um, do you, is it, is text messaging part of this stuff at all or no? Yeah, we are part of that technology platform. We cool. invested in an omni channel technology platform, like I said, about 18, uh, 18 months or so. And so it's, it's inbound, it's outbound, um, it's text, it's email, right. And it's all about queuing up and, and, uh, and measuring the contact contact rate. How many yeah. times are you contacting? Right. We offer flexibility there as well. We have clients that want us to contact 12 times. Uh, mm -hmm. we recommend minimum of seven, right? We control that in the system. So it queues up and, uh, and the agents do as you know, the, the business rules are you know, set by the client. Got it. Well, listen, man, like, uh, we're damn near an hour into this thing too, which, uh, I could keep going on it just because, you know, to, to me, it's, it's, um, you know, most will listen to this while they're driving to wherever. Um, so, uh, to me, this is like one of the most important top things that you can control in your business, regardless of the business that can help you, um, book more calls, you know, um, get more, getting more homes, give the opportunity to sell more things to keep your business going. Cause there's a lot of people that are having super tough time right now with their business because the first half of the year from the uh, HVAC or say straight demand perspective was, was significantly down. Um, so this is something that to me is mission critical and probably should have been focused on f forever. <laughs> At least in my 15 years of being a digital, this has always been kind of a pain. Um, but this is something that's a hundred percent in your control as a listener. Um, and my mission has been to find, finally find a solution for all of you, for the, for the industry as a whole that I love, that I care about, that I've been a big part of. And I feel really good about this, man. And, and that's why I brought you on here. And like I said to the listeners, like you didn't pay me to be here, didn't sponsor this podcast and those things. I brought him in here because I want to help you. Um, and, I don't know if you have like terms and like, do they have to sign up? Is it a month? Is it every three months? Is it a year? Is it a whatever? It, it's month to month. Um, you know, happy to take your contracts, long-term contracts. It's month to month. Come try us out. Um, you know, Chris, I appreciate you've given us a lot of feedback. You've kind of helped us in, uh, in the journey in the short time we've been, we've been working together. So I appreciate that. Yeah, man. It's the greater good, right? Like we're trying to do the right things together, you know, and I know that your values match my values and what you're trying to accomplish are the same as us too. And so it's easy to work with that. And you guys take feedback really well, even when I beat, beat you up on it. <clears throat> um, but it's all to create this amazing service in which you guys are doing. So even in the short interim that you've been able to have a lot of success with it, I'm excited to see what this looks like even through next year. So Absolutely. I appreciate you coming down all the way down here from Salt Lake city to Phoenix, Arizona. So thanks for coming in studio with me. I appreciate you. It was great. I appreciate you having me. Thank you. Hey David, if anybody listening right now wants to get a hold of you or just next in general about, um, what, what just questions, maybe a, a demo or even a potential partnership or whatever it is, like what's the best way for them to be able to get in contact with you? Yeah, two ways. Either uh, go to our website. There's a lot to learn there, nexa.com, N-E-X-A.com, simple. Uh, or email us, sales at nexa.com. Uh, and if they want to mention me, if they want to chat, I'm always happy to, to chat with uh, prospects, clients, partners. So they can always mention me and it'll get to me. Perfect. And I know David's on uh, LinkedIn as well. So maybe if you want to reach out to him, if you're cool with that, like personally or whatever, they can hit you up on LinkedIn. Absolutely. All about growth. So I'd love to learn from you. And if I can help you grow, happy to uh, lend a hand. Yeah. So listeners take advantage of the situation and maybe, uh, maybe what we can do is um, you react, reach out to him and say, Hey, I heard you on the to the point podcast and he'll come up with some like something special to give you for it. Absolutely. We'll have, <laughs> we'll have a podcast show special. Okay, cool. So then just mention to the point podcast, cool. Whatever that is, make sure to ask him for a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to finish this podcast off like I always do. Uh, and that is to read off a review. Um, and this one is from comfort star. So shout out to comfort stars. Appreciate you. This was a very thoughtful, uh, very thoughtful review. Uh, five stars, amazing podcast. I'm so grateful to have been recommended to look into and listen to the podcast. As someone else said best and simply put, game changer. I love each and every different role uh, in the heating and air conditioning business. It's all about the customer experience and providing outstanding customer service. I was very fortunate to come up, come from the ground up and see one of the fastest growing heating and air conditioning companies in California. I couldn't be more grateful for the opportunity to have worked for the team, let alone get the opportunity to get to listen to many of the key players and heavy hitters in the marketing, uh, it, hitters in the market nationwide. A big thank you to all the success stories shared on the podcast. Hey, Comfort Stars, I appreciate that. That's very thoughtful. Like, I think we have close to 200 reviews or something like that. We're sitting at a 4.9. So, hey, we must be doing something right with To The Point. We should have way more than that. 
listeners, would you leave us a review, please? We need more reviews than that. I'm actually starting to feel a little bit uh, weird about not having enough reviews. So now we're going to change that. So listeners, please leave a review. I really appreciate that. Especially if it's about like our guests in particular, like David on here, and you want to leave a review for him specifically, I'd love to be able to share that with him. But listen, he gave you a lot of information about what Nexa can do to help you, whether it's Nexa or another answering service one, you got to find one that's really good, hold them accountable Make sure that they're actually booking legit appointments for you. They're not raking you over the coals. Make sure you got the right people on the other end that are representing your business, answering that phone because it's never been more mission critical than it is right now. You don't have to do everything, but you got to do something. No zero days.